Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so time to paint along. Grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, and let's rid the world of unpainted models. Get some work done. Uh, today I'm, I'm not going to be painting up some Space Marines as I normally do. I'll be working on a Bane Blade that I'm actually just going to sell. Uh, the reason is I just wanted to get it finished up so I, I can uh, officially sell it. And uh, yeah, this week I'm working on on and off with my Imperial Fists. And uh, yeah, maybe if I have time I'll get to that. Maybe I'll work on some commission stuff as well. But it's painting. You know what? Let's paint with Jay. That's what the spirit is. Not necessarily working on my Imperial Fist Army. I'm excited. I gotta get more done. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started on the Imperial Fist. Talk about my week. Or I'm just gonna work on Bane Blades already. We'll talk about my week. And uh, we'll all get some work done. Yes. Hey everyone, so today I'll be working on this Bane Blade. I've been having a lot of fun painting it up. Airbrushes, gotta love them. I did the cool camel pattern. And uh, for the first one I painted, I painted Bane Blade a little while ago. And uh, sorry, I'm gonna put on a glove because I'm using a large model and I'm gonna hold it a lot. Um, so I painted up a Bane Blade a little while ago, and I used Bane Blade Brown, and this time I wanted to go a little bit lighter, to have a bit more of a, of a discrepancy between the greens and the, and the white. You know, I wanted a stronger contrast, so I went with uh, Ushabti Bone this time. Well, I got, what's it called? Uh, Zandri Dust and Ushabti Bone. So, good stuff there. And as I said, I'm going to actually be selling this model soon. Um, I've, I've been trying to just wrestle with some extra funds, you know, because Gen Con's coming up next week. I'll talk about that after. And, and you know, so I do is I took a hard look recently at the models in my workshop, and some of them I'm just selling off. So I've had a chance to paint them up, make them look pretty, and I'll sell them off. You know, a lot of the time I love just painting, so it, it's not, you know, I'm not really going to be a Bane Blade user in my battle reports. So, I don't mind. So it'll probably go on Kijiji tomorrow or the next day or something. So it's cool. Um, it's cool when I put up like things on Kijiji and people are like, "Is this Jay?" I said, "Yeah." You know, I tell people, like, "Oh, is this the one in this tutorial or this you know video?" I'm like, "Yep." And it's cool. You know. So in this one, I'll, right now I'm just gonna take some uh, Iron Breaker and do a quick dry brush some of these metallic areas to get some texture on them. Bane blades are cool vehicles. This one isn't magnetizer. I got this one in a trade a long time ago from uh, Owen. And when I got it, it was like gross. I didn't want to sell it the condition it was in. I just, it feels weird. But uh, yeah, I really wanted to paint it up. So. Plus it's experience, you know, like it, every model that I paint up, it, it's an experience. And sometimes you don't even think about it, but you learn a new technique or a new style or a new approach. And, uh, yeah, and it's always experience, you know. That's how I consider things. So what I love about miniature painting is that you can always, you always get experience every model you paint. So, good things to keep positive, you know. It, it really is. And it's a great looking model in the end. I'm, I'm much more excited to sell, you know. Maybe it'll get a better retail value and stuff, but we'll see. If it doesn't sell, maybe I'll bring it to Gen Con and try to sell it there. Try to scalp a model at Gen Con, that'd be kind of fun. Um, what else is new and exciting? Yeah, not a whole lot. Is yeah, I've had a good week, you know. I'll talk about my week. So, my week. What has happened since last time, you know. Forgive me people for I've sinned kind of thing. What has happened in my last week? Um, it's been a good week. I, I went and saw a couple concerts because the Peterborough Music Fest. Um, they bring in mostly Canadian, but there are there's a couple of American artists this year. Uh, they bring in artists and there's local concerts that are free. And there is said, usually the talent's actually pretty decent. You know, it's pretty decent talent. So the last week I saw two different art. Uh, I saw a band and an artist. I, on last Saturday, I went and saw a an indie artist named Hannah Georges, and she was really good. She's kind of like, um, she's very similar to, I would say, if, if you guys know Feist, the indie artist Feist, she sounds very Feist-esque. She's kind of like Feist meets a little bit of Alanis Morissette, her vocal style. 
but in my opinion, she's very close to Feist. You know, she's an indie artist, uh, a heavy electronic influence on her music, and it's really good. You know, I don't mind ever going to see artists I don't know. And what I typically do is, if I like some of their music, I just I take note of the lyrics, or I record it on my phone, and then I go and buy the songs later on um, on iTunes. So I did that for uh, for Hannah George's, and plus it helps you know support her. You know, I'm I'm not I don't put myself in the exact same category as her, but I know what it is like to be someone who produces some type of media and needs support. You know, she's not rich. She's a local. She's a Canadian indie artist. Even Canadian major artists aren't rich. You know, you're rich. Like you'll only know a Canadian artist is rich when they move to the states, kind of thing. Like Bieber. Um. So yeah. So I always support them there. And then the second, she was actually really good. And then the second was a band. The second concert I went to. It's a band. An, it's an old rock band from Saskatoon, called Northern Pikes. The Northern Pikes. And their number, their best known song is an old rock song, and it's called "She Ain't Pretty, She Just Looks That Way." Where the chorus is like, "She ain't pretty, she just looks that way." And that's the that's their big song, and they were good. It was cool seeing them. It had a, a bit of a Randy Bachman feel to it, but uh, Randy Bachman to me still, after all these concerts, it's still by far the best concert I've seen this summer. Um, in this music fest, and it's really sad because oh my goodness, his numbers were just tiny. Hannah Georges even had like more than triple Randy Bachman, and Randy Bachman should have had the biggest, um, the biggest group there of people. So I said, right now I'm still just taking some Iron Breaker, doing some light dusting, just building up some texture on the uh, the treads. Now, for this, I'm going to stop at a certain point with this tank because I'm going to use an airbrush later and do some dirt along here, and I'll probably use the headlights. I'm going to use this tank. Like I used my um, my other Bane Blade that I painted up for some miniature, not some, some airbrush 101, which is a series of videos in the uh, in the warp where I, it's all about airbrushing. So I'll probably use this in a couple ways for maybe in that. Uh, maybe I'll use it to show how to do lighting, you know, on vehicles with an airbrush or something. So this won't be completely done before I'm, but when I'm done it in this video, but it'll be close. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's been good. Uh, this weekend I'm probably not going to go to the concert. Maybe I will. We'll see. Depending on how much work I get done. I have to do a lot of stuff in the next few days. Because it kind of just hit me today that I have to get all next week's content done before I leave for Gen Con. And I'm leaving for Gen Con, you know, mid next week. So I got to get a lot of work done. I really do. Um, yeah, definitely got to get a lot of work done. So we'll see. But this week's band. Several bands this summer are just cover or tribute bands, and not, and to be honest, I'm not really big into tribute bands. You know, I'm just. Eh. They're okay, but you know, I'm just, I'm not the biggest into tribute bands. And this week's, um, this week's big um, band is um, it's called Daydreamer. And uh, most people can guess by the name of this the band. Um, they're a I think it's called Daydreamer. They're a Beatles. Uh, they're a Beatles tribute band, which is cool, you know. But I'm just I don't know if I'm if I have time I'll go see them. But if I don't, I uh, I'm not going to be too upset, you know. By the way, uh, shout out if, if you're watching, but uh, one of my viewers who I, I talk with every now and then named Mark. Mark, man, I just shout out to you, man. I hope this week's gone better for you. That's all I'm going to say. You know, Mark's going through some stuff. And uh, my thoughts are with you, man. But uh, he paints with Jay, so 
yeah, Mark, man, I hope you're feeling better. And, uh, yeah, I'll, you know, I hope the worst is behind you. So right now I'm just going to take my favorite color to use, gray liner, and just paint uh, the parts of the guns that aren't going to be metallic. I also usually, I, well, I used to use gray liner to paint, um, before I got into Minotaur, to paint smoke and stuff, but Minotaur has an identical color to gray liner, basically. It's called Raven Black, and uh, it's basically, it's a dark mac gray. And I love using dark mac rays. As anybody who watches any of my painting tutorials in the warp would know, I use gray liner in almost every painting tutorial. Wherever there's black, I use black and then gray liner to highlight up. So. Yeah. So I'm excited for Gen Con. Except every like now and then I get an update from Gen Con that kind of angers me. And today I got one of them. Um, there's no shuttles available. So for those of you who don't know, if you basically your two options with Gen Con are you, you pay a lot of money if you can get, and if you can get it, uh, you can try to get a downtown hotel, but they're very expensive. And right now what, what kind of annoys me is that the Canadian dollar has just died since I signed up for Gen Con and I didn't pay yet because they, they don't, it's not required. So... The Canadian dollar has died, just died in, in relation to the United States dollar. You know, it, it hit a, I think a seven or seven year or eight year low the other day. You know, lowest has been for a long time. It's like a dollar Canadian is now worth only like 74 cents American. So the biggest problem is, obviously I'm a Canadian going to the States, so you know, Prices can be very deceiving, and I'm going to have to remind myself that at Gen Con. Um, so, yeah, I'll have, definitely have to remind myself that. You know, years ago, I backpacked Scotland, and you go, oh, it's only this many pounds, and you go, wait a minute, that's a lot. But, uh, so, what was I? Sorry, Gen Con. So, Canadian dollar, kind of sucks. But uh, today, so the other option, if you're not going to buy the, the downtown if you're not going to go downtown, the other options, they have, they, they bought up blocks of, of hotel areas around Indianapolis, which is what I did. I went in the east side because I really, I, the thing is I just chose, it was kind of like, I just chose one and I'm like, ah, La Quinta, it sounds cool. I'll go there. The prices were very comparable. I had a choice between one in the east end, one in the west end. And I chose east end because it was easy, it, it's uh, a lot less of a drive. It was like half an hour less of a drive than the airport end from where I'm going, right? Because one of them you had to kind of go past downtown and one of them you didn't. So I said, okay, I'll, sit, I'll do the one that's easiest to get to. And then today I found out that my, due to lack of popularity or some reason, they canceled the shuttle buses from our hotel block. There are, it used to be called the yellow route and they're canceled. So that really kind of sucked because, uh, yeah. So now there's no shuttle buses to get us to the, to the convention. So I, and again, I'm not going to be, you know, the biggest Debbie down or anything. There's obviously ways around it. So the choices are you switch hotels. So I was like, oh, I should just switch hotels then. But by this point, your hotel booking is kind of final. You can't book within the block anymore. And I looked, and I'm like, okay, fine. So the only option is to drive, basically. So I'm going to drive, which is okay, right? I just had to, so uh, today I had just had to buy some parking passes. Um, I would have preferred, you know, the, the buses, but uh, it's okay. You know, silver lining is I can control them my own destiny. I just have to deal with traffic on my own. And I have a GPS, so I'll be able to get around. And, you know, it's okay. All right? I don't need to sit on a bus with a bunch of people. Though it's really cool. It's a great way to meet people, I found. Um, so, yeah. So that really sucked. because, And I was really blown away at, at the silliness that... It's really stupid. Like, really silly. That they would cancel the shuttle buses for Depticon to my area, it was, I, I'm just floored because it, 
the amount of, of us that are going to be burned by that are, is huge. I'm not the only one. I looked on some forum and there was at least like a dozen of us that were noticing it. And then other people uh, were trying to figure out what to do as well. Because it wasn't just our area. Um, one other area as well, I think the North End, also got cancelled. So, yeah, it was, it, it's a bit silly. So, I'm just going to have to drive. So, I bought a parking pass for the area. It's about the same cost, so it's not, you know, it's going to be comparable. It's all good. So, I said, the pros are I get to choose, yeah, I can choose what time I leave, and I don't have to worry about a bus and stuff. But uh, the great thing about the bus is that, I, and I'm not really big into alcohol or anything, but if I wanted to, I could have a drink um, and relax and not have to worry about driving later, you know? And also, it, it's tiring. Like, you, you're walking around for days and days, you know, at conventions, and uh, it gets tiring. So having to drive after a day of walking, it, it, it's just tiring. But it's not the end of the world. I'll just, I'll manage. Uh, I'm going to hook up with one of my viewers. Uh, that didn't sound right, but yeah. I'm going to meet up with one of my viewers, I guess. That's better of saying. Um, Josh. And we're going to hang out for maybe, you know, probably film a battle report, play a game. He'll show me around the area. It's going to be a good day. It'll probably be Saturday. Um, so I'm excited. I always like meeting viewers. And if you're going to Gen Con, find me. Come say hi. Talk to me. Hang out with me. I'm always up for that. That's why I want to go to this, these conventions. Just to meet people. And have a great time. Hmm. I'll do the, those flamers. So, I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. Just these little silly things just keep popping up. I'm like, come on, Canadian dollar. Get stronger. Stop it. Stop going down. I don't think I'm going to buy a lot this convention. I bought a lot last year. But since then, I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a lot this year that I'm going to want to buy. Probably going to buy Forge World uh, Imperial Fists. They always sell those, those really nice um, Space Marine Faction t-shirts. And if they do, I want to buy an Imperial Fist Faction t-shirt, obviously. Because I'm loving playing them. So... That'll be good. Um, maybe a couple... I don't know. I looked at the release schedule for War Machine and Hordes. Not a lot that really applies to the armies I play. I'll probably pick up E. Haley. She won't be a, a diehard one, you know, because she already got released, I'm pretty sure, by this point. Or a 3 Haley, whatever she's called. 3 Haley. But um, that'll be good. You know, I have a couple things I want to buy, but not too extreme. I'm not going to spend that much money. Maybe this model sells in the meantime. Let's see. What should I paint next? Mm, let's do chrome. Not chrome. Uh, brass. There's not brass. There it is. <laughs> I'm doing a bunch of commissions this week for a gentleman with his nomads. Great time doing it. Halfway done. Nomads are a cool army. Yep. It's been fun. Commissions are going well. Obviously, if you're interested in me doing a commission for you, check out my, my Facebook page on it at, or contact me at commissions at jadedproductions.com. And I would love to paint your model suit. But yeah, I'm excited to go meet viewers, hang out with the WGCers. It's one of the two times a year I get to see the WGC people. Hoping Justin Tan comes. We'll see. He wasn't there at Adepticon. It feels weird vlogging without Justin Tan. Yeah, I'll definitely vlog. 
and uh, oh, maybe I should really try to pick up one of those chest cams, uh, the uh, chest strap, whatever they, you know, doesn't sound right either, chest cams. I'm seeing a lot of things today that can be taken weirdly. Uh, what are they called? I don't know, harnesses that you put on your, your, your chest to, for Gen Con. That'll be cool. Yeah, we really should get one of those in the next few days. Mm -hmm. It's been a good week. Uh, tomorrow, it's rendering right now, so it'll probably be put up tomorrow. The next How to Play 40K. It's finally in the books. Blast Weapons. Uh, not Blast Weapons, sorry, that's next week. Or the week after. Uh, this week is Flamer Templates. Flamer Templates. I'm happy to get that series back on track again. It basically, as I said, the next ones are going to go Flamer Templates, Blast Templates, Vehicles in general, and then uh, Assault Phase. And then Exceptions and then Special Things and stuff like that. Special Rules or something. But assault Phase is coming up. And then after Assault Phase, it'll be good. You know, that's pretty much the game. So... So that's good. Um, oh, what else? Oh, sorry. I got a live show going the other day. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Was it yesterday? I don't even remember. Uh, so basically, people have been asking for me to bring back my... I used to do a live show a while, a long time ago uh, for Mini Wargaming. Or under Mini Wargaming. It was for my own stuff. But, you know, it was called, like, Jay the Painting Live or something. And... Uh, it was fun. I did it through Justin TV, I believe it was at the time, and then eventually became Twitch. And then, yeah. So it was good, and a great time doing it. But um, my computer has since, you know, gone to have problems. And I don't, I've kind of fallen out how to do it, because it's, it's slightly different for YouTube now. YouTube now offers live shows and stuff. And I know Dan, um, Codex Dan doesn't, you know, Owen. So that's cool. So I tried out my computer doing a live show and it was really fun because like no one showed up for a while i think it's like five if you watch the video and there's really, it's really cool now that youtube just auto records it which is nice because then i don't need to record it on my own computer so all my ram can go towards um all my ram can go towards you know just broadcasting i found that to be really nice and the quality wasn't bad at all it was it was actually much better than i thought it would be and people came and it was really fun we hung out for like an hour i was almost supposed to do it for like 10 minutes but when people started, I just wanted to keep going. You know, when people started showing up. So right now, as I said, I'm doing Brass Scorpion. Just uh, doing the ends of these guns. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it, I'm definitely going to start doing a live show. If not next week, the week after. Because next week, I only have a couple days to do it before Gen Con. I don't think I have the time, frankly. But maybe a live show after Gen Con to talk about it and stuff. It'll be cool. And the only downside to this, I'm going to still do painting with Jay and stuff because I can't paint in the house. It's an agreement I have with my wife. So I can't paint in the house. So maybe I'll assemble stuff or something. But uh, yeah, so I still, you know, I love painting with Jay because then I can get stuff done and... Let's make those hooks brass. Yeah. Um, where is it? It was great. I had a great time. <laughs> a lot of fun. And I really love, and I missed, like, instantly, I... I, I I was like, oh, this is why I used to do live shows. I used to love it. Was the interaction. You know, obviously, you leave comments. And I answer them in my Q&Js. And I think about them. And we paint together, you know, us painting people. But live shows, there's just so much more interaction between you and I. 
And that's what I love. Like, I love the interaction. That's why I love going to conventions. Is I finally get to actually talk to you guys and girls in person. And it's, it's, it's awesome. And it's really effective. It's also very efficient. Because, you know, like, if you have a question, you could be like, Hey, Jay, on my live show. Hey, Jay, why do you do this? And I'll talk to you about it. And look at that. You got an answer within 30 seconds. It was crazy. Like, I had 180 comments on my live show. I was just like, whoa. So, yeah. Good stuff. It was really fun. You know, I know Chris and Owen have loved to do it theirs for a while. And that's kind of all Dan does now is his live show. So, I knew that it'd be fun. And I, and I really didn't miss it. I was just trying to see if my computer can handle it. And whether or not I can figure out how to do it again. And so I can. Apparently, so... Yeah, it was really good. So I'm excited to bring it back. Painting uh, live shows will be back in the near future, probably week after next. And life will be good. You know, we'll, we'll talk. And uh, yeah, have a great conversation. I've decided I'm probably going to, excuse me, I'm probably going to try multiple different times and alternate maybe between weeks and stuff. Because the thing is with live shows is um, depending on, and I, I discussed this during my live show, is depending on what time you start and end, you, you appeal to certain audiences based on where they live. You know, um, I was very surprised that I had a viewer from, from Germany watching my live show because Tim, it was like a crazy time. Um, or maybe they were watching afterwards, but uh, it was, you know, like it gets really late. And early, depending on where you live. When I started at, I used to do my live show starting at 10 o'clock at night and go till 1 in the morning. It used to be epic. Now, I don't think it'll be that epic from here on. I don't, I can't do a three-hour show. I don't have the time, unfortunately. But maybe I'll do an hour and a half, maybe an hour, depending on the day. You know, I'll try to get as long as I can. But, uh, also, you kind of lose your voice by the end of it. It's kind of fun. But, yeah, my, my shows used to be three hours long, and they started at 10 o'clock at night. And I was intentionally put at 10 o'clock at night by Mini Wargaming to, um, to, to get certain audiences. Because, like, uh, depending on where you live, you can't watch them because you'll be sleeping. So Dave and Matt's live shows, for example, are typically non-existent to Australians, New Zealand people, and some people in North America because they work during the day or they're asleep in, in New Zealand or Australia. So my live show was perfect for these time slots because to the people on the East, uh, so the, the West Coast of Canada, Canada, North America, it was only like, you know, 7 p.m. when I started. So they could watch it because they were out of work and, you know, they're home. And then the Australians, then would be the mid time of the day so they could watch it and it was great. And we had a great time. And I just, every night I was always filled with, you know, Australians and, and uh, New Zealand and, and certain people from North America. But the, I, I rarely got British people or Europeans because, or if I did, it would only be like one or two, because to them, it's, it's a terrible time. Like if I start at 10 o'clock at night here, it's, it's four in the morning in England, or three or four in the morning, depending on the time of year. So for that sake and for sake of fairness, I think I'm gonna try alternating between weeks or something and figuring out times because and then I'm able to do like one at 10 o'clock my time and then one of them at noon my time so that way one of them will appeal to one audience in country and then the other one will appeal to another audience in country yeah by the way Adam you missed a spot and um I look forward to seeing you. I think you're going to Gen Con. Hopefully you're going to Gen Con, Adam. And if you are, I look forward to seeing you at Gen Con next week. I'll find you. I'll hear you from a distance. We'll hear each other. It'll be all good. So I look forward to seeing Adam next week. I haven't seen him since Adepticon. He's a good guy. He likes people. And Stu's painting some orcs right now. I can see it from here. Stu, you're painting orcs. Um, yeah. 
Jesus, psychic. There's a mistake. I got Q and J. Oh, I did Q and J as well last week. I've had a good week. It's been a productive week. I got Q and J done. Um, so we're back up to date for Q and J's. And yeah, it's been a productive week. Good. So they're now shaded. Good. Shaded. Scallywag. Oh, I got a. I didn't. I missed a spot. And then after this, I'll work on the golds. And then I'm probably going to put down this model. Because uh, then the rest will be just airbrushed, as I said. Just be, um, you know, used for weathering and stuff. Good. Well, maybe at that point I'll dry brush them. Hmm. Oh, I still have areas I can paint. I probably will. We'll see how long. So next, uh, yeah, we'll work on the golds. And for the golds, I'll use mm, old gold, which is Oro Viejo. Viejo? Oro Viejo? Shaking up the old gold. Yeah, I love this uh, higher alcohol concentration isopropanol. It's been fun to use. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Weeks just fly by. I've been talking about Gen Con for a long time. Now it's finally here. And next week, by the Painting with Jay time, I'll be actually at Gen Con. Craziness. Craziness indeed. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. And then it's my, kind of my last, you know, thing of the summer. Even this year, it'll be my last, you know, big wargaming thing. Maybe I'll do War Masters. Depending on what it is. I don't know what Warmasters is. Let me see quickly. Not that you'll see my hands anyway. No pants. Sorry, right. just got boring for a second. Hopefully you're painting. I just got a message about when War Masters is this year. War Masters is a big September twentieth. There we go. Uh, War Masters is a big forty k tournament, so I'll probably do that this year and vlog it and have a great time. Uh, my partner in crime is going to be uh, Mike. So. So right now I'm just going to use my old gold and get these guys looking awesome. I love the old gold. It's it, Probably my favorite liquid gold is the rich gold. Because I love it. It's very bright. But I find the old gold fits really well with the with a lot of the 40k models as well. Because it's just, it has that, again, the old gold appearance. And the color has a great uh, matching to a lot of colors, you know. If I was painting like ultramarines, I'd probably use old gold. I don't know. Yeah, uh, the rich gold would look good too. But I just love the shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's gonna be an awesome time. As I said, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to get the live shows going again.
which people will also probably paint during. But as I said, the live shows are just really interactive. And it won't replace my Q&Js or anything, but uh, it's just nice to have that level of interaction with, with the viewers. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Got my good thing. Good. That symbol's done. Let's do the front symbols. This is new and exciting. Not that much. You know, we're just working hard. Painting. Uh, and this week, as I said, I'm just taking a break from painting a few of my Imperial Fists. I'll get back on it. The next model I might paint up is a... Uh, I'm building a... What's it called? A scout... Not a scout bike, but a... Oh, what's it called? Land speeder. Because I need a land speeder for uh, if you want to run Deathwing, just normal bikes, in a the Lion's Blade Strike Force, you need a land speeder. So I should definitely get one of those paint up. And so I'm gonna be basically I'm splitting up all my vanilla Marine, my vanilla, my Marines amongst Dark Angels and Vanilla. You know. And I'm going to choose just one, at, you know, based on it. I'll still use them for, you know, I'm going to easily swap them out for battle reports. I don't care using Dark Angel models as vanilla or vice versa. Because I just don't have the money to build two completely independent armies. You know, I, I, I can't have, you know, a bunch of Razorbacks painted one way and the other way. And uh, and use them, you know, only for battle ports for their own. I can't, so it'll be okay, you know. And as long as things are basically WYSIWYG, people are usually happy. And my primary armies will still, you know, like when I play Dark Angels, my army is going to be almost entirely Dark Angels, and you'll see that. You know, it won't uh, won't be confusing at all. No. What else? I really want to see... I haven't seen a lot of movies this year. I, there have been a bunch of movies coming out that I really... I wanted to see. But, um... I just haven't had the chance. I haven't, I've been so busy. You know, I wanted to see Jurassic World. I didn't. Um, I've heard it's okay. Uh, I wanted to see that emotion movie. Whatever it was called. Uh, that what The Disney Pixar one with emotions. And each character is emotion. Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's not called emotions. That would be too easy. But whatever that one was called. I really want to see that one. I love Disney Pixar. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Disney ones that are just, you know, like, I never saw Frozen. Um, but uh, I did. I love Direct It Ralph, which is not Pixar. It's an easy way to tell. If it's Pixar, it has John Ratzenberger in it. If you can't name where John Ratzenberger is in the movie and he's not in it, it's not Pixar. And, uh, yeah, I wish I could have seen that one. That one was good. And then, what else? Uh, oh, Ant-Man. Apparently, everyone is really liking Ant-Man. It's apparently the best Marvel movie that's come out in a long time, if one of the, the best, period. And so that makes me excited. Paul Rudd. Uh, he, I think he'd make an interesting Ant-Man, so. That'll be good. And uh, Evangeline Lilly's in it, so there's barely anything she's in that I don't like, other than the finale of Lost. So that'll be good. I want to see that one. Um, I even want to see this movie that came out uh, this week. The um, what's it called? Pixels. It's getting destroyed by the 
by the reviewers. But it's an Adam Sandler movie, right? Adam Sandler hasn't gotten a good reviewed movie in a long time. Since Grown Ups, you know? And then Grown Ups 2 came out and instantly killed that one as well. They did not, no one liked Grown Ups 2 apparently. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was, I thought that it was brilliant of an idea. Like, it's really cool them fighting video games, but apparently it just doesn't work well. And it's an Adam Sandler movie and people hate it. But I want to go see it. I'm probably going to see it. I don't usually... For me, I don't usually care about what reviewers say. Because, let's be honest, people. You know, if you look at the... I'm not a, I'm not big in... Uh, nothing against people who want to watch the Academy Award winning movies. Right? But most Academy Award winning movies are like these... It's a single type of... It, it's like... They're so repetitive in what they like in, in best picture films. Right? There's that Oscar bait type movie. And I don't really like that kind. My in-laws love them. But uh, I, you know, I said nothing against people who, who like them. But I'm just, I'm not in that kind of movie. I like, you know, happier movies. Not movies based on a true story in which the main character recently died. How many movies does that sum up? That were nominated for one Best Picture. You know? It's like, keys winning Best Picture. So as I said, I, I don't mind. I don't really go by what critics say. Um, you know, I, I missed it, but I recorded it. I gotta watch Sharknado. I wanna see Sharknado 3, which is like the polar opposite of an Academy Award winning movie. It, you know, if, if the sequel's called Oh Hell No, it's probably not, you know, it's just one of the movies I wanna watch because as shark tornadoes, you know. So that's the way I watch movies, you know. I, it doesn't have to be critically acclaimed. There's some people watch them, and that's awesome. My in-laws love them. Like, my mother-in-law, every time, you know, every year, she has seen probably, my in-laws probably see, you know, five out of the six best picture uh, nominated movies. Or what they do is they go after they're nominated, and then they go see them. You know? Um, and I don't really watch them. I don't, I don't really, I'm not interested. I've, I've rarely seen a, a movie nominated for best picture. There's been a handful of movies that I've seen of one best picture. I think the last one I saw was Return of the King. And the last one that I saw was nominated for best picture was probably, I think it was Up, was Up nominated for best picture? Or Wally. One of them was. I think it was Up. It was nominated for best picture. But, uh, yeah, I want to go see Pixels. Apparently people hate it, but I don't care. I want to go see it. They fight aliens, video games. You know, I love it. They had me at alien video game things. And the graphics look amazing for the movie. Like, the the CGI looks so cool. And I'm curious how it turns out. So. And it's an Adam Sandler movie, right? So. And it won't be, you know, the greatest thing. But as long as you go in expecting, you know, you know what to expect with Adam Sandler movies now. You don't go in. Like, he has, he said some very good movies. But, uh. You don't go in expecting a movie that will bring out the emotions deep inside you and make you question life and love and the pursuit of happiness. No, it's going to be like Adam Sandler movie. And it stars the same six guys that are in all Adam Sandler movies. Kevin James. There will probably be a Rob Schneider cameo. Lately Shaquille O'Neal, Chris Rock. You know, a David Spade, a bunch of SNL actors. And that's okay. And once you go in and you expect that, you can have a great time and watch your movies. That's what I love to do. It's the same eight guys that are in all the other Adam Sandler movies. The Adam Sandler Gravy Train is what it's called or something. But that's okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm a goof, you know. I'm not. I don't need to go watch the serious movies. I like movies that make me happy, or you know, I really love lately. Some, as I said, Disney Pixar. Um, they have made so many movies over the last you know, five or six years that I've just loved. Wall-E is one of my favorite movies of all time, and Up. If you can, if you watch the opening season, the scene of Up, and it doesn't break your heart. You know, like, to me, that is one of the most moving opening scenes of any movie of all time. 
is the opening scene from Up. It's just, it's awesome. And I'll admit it, I'm a guy, and you know what, I'm in touch with my emotions, I guess, for something, I don't know, but I'm a goofball, but I love it. Like, when I first saw the opening scene of Up, it just broke my heart. And, uh, such an amazing movie. Wally -E is probably my favorite movie over Up, because of the fact that, um, it's robots, you know, and it's in the future, and it's robot love, man, that's just awesome, you know, robots are my favorite thing, and uh, on top of that, uh, the, what I loved most about Wally -E was the lack of, of words, they, they made the movie, um, you know, with very minimal dialect, and that to me is just beautiful. It was really cool to watch. You know, a movie that has very little talking but was just as good and made you think. And, you know, it's just... Fred Willard was also awesome in it. But, uh... Yeah. Apparently a lot of people felt that way about uh, Toy Story 3. I never saw Toy Story 3. I really should see it. A lot of weird stuff in the news this week. Uh, that Ashley Madison hack was really weird. For those of you who don't know, it was it was huge. Like right? it was all of the news and everything. Um, one of the really big, big companies that promotes cheating is called Ashley Madison. The the motto of Ashley Madison is life is short, have an affair. That's literally their their motto. And Ashley Madison got hacked earlier in the week, and that's kind of wacky. What else happened in the news? Donald Trump. Apparently Donald Trump is like runner is like the lead runner, like he's the 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 main candidate right now that people are thinking he's going to get the Republican Party nomination for president. <laughs> I think that's crazy, but uh, there have been weirder nominations, you know. Like I'm an older fart. When Ronald Reagan got nominated, people were like, "Whoa!" I know that. Now I'm not. I wasn't voting for Ronald Reagan because I'm Canadian and I'm not that old apparently. But um, you know, Ronald Reagan was an actor. You know, Sonny Bono and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse Ventura have become congressmen, or congressmen? Uh, what are they called? Not congressmen. Um, governors. So, I don't know. Just Donald Trump is just hilarious. Like, to me, imagine if he still had the, the show of The Apprentice and he was president of the United States. That would be so wacky. That would be wacky. But, um, yeah, that's kind of cool. But apparently in this, this week he gave, uh, he, one of his, the people right, running against him, he gave out her cell phone number during a press conference. That's yeah, pretty wacky. I've never seen that tactic before. Right now in Canada, uh, we have a, we have an election coming up soon too. We actually have an election coming up much sooner than the American one. And the liberal candidate is the son of arguably one of the best or most popular um, prime ministers of Canada of all time, Pierre Trudeau. And his son, Justin Trudeau, is running. And he would also become like the youngest prime minister ever of Canada, I'm pretty sure. But uh, that's the question. Will he become president or prime minister? Sorry. I don't know. We'll see. I personally don't see him getting elected, and plus early polls show him being a third, he, he may not even come in the top two. Doesn't mean one day he won't be Prime Minister, but uh, I don't know, I don't know if that'll happen now. I'm talking politics, I think that's one of the things I'm not supposed to talk about. Well, I'm not talking about like pros and cons of each guy or anything, I'm just talking what's up in the news. Man, am I a rebel. Mm -hmm. Just finishing up the touches of this, of the gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I've been watching BattleBots. I love it. Yep. BattleBots has been awesome. That and American Ninja Warrior. Which I'm trying to get in better shape, because American Ninja Warrior kind of... I see people in awesome shape, and a lot of the time, the stories of the people behind American, in American Ninja Warrior are, like, tragic. It makes me want to get in better shape. Get healthier. Stop eating so poorly. You know. So maybe I am. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm basically done. I might call it soon. We're at, like, 50. Yeah. All right. I was going to see how long it took me to finish this. I could probably do a couple more colors quickly and then uh, call it a night and then airbrush the rest tomorrow and then put it up for sale, probably on Kijiji or something. As I said, not all models. Um, this is one of those ones I've just been trying to finish and get it gone because it, um, it's an expensive model to have lying around your garage where, or your workshop that in which you don't plan on using, right? And this is one of them. I don't really want it. I don't plan on pe playing Apocalypse and Battle Reports anytime soon, so... That's okay. You know, if I sell it, I'll put it towards funds that other models and, and it'll just make other things that'll make my battle reports better. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful model. Some people are telling me I should make it into an orc tank, and I'm like, that's a really expensive orc tank. You know, a looted wagon. A bane blade being a looted wagon. Oh, that's a. I know some people have done it. Cool. Yeah. What other shows am I watching? Summertime shows. America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent's a good show. I really, my front runner, um, my favorite contestant this season of America's Got Talent is Piff the Magic Dragon. Now, I first saw Piff the Magic Dragon on a TV show called Fool Us, which is a Penn and Teller um, competition show in which magicians just go on stage and they try to fool Penn and Teller. They do a trick, and if Penn and Teller can guess how they did it, they didn't fool them. But if they do fool them... Uh, the magicians then get to open for Penn and Teller in Vegas. And Piff did the show, and the first season was a few years ago in Britain. Oh, apparently I'm out of Bouchab Dimon. Oh, this should be enough for now, I guess. Thought I had more. Let me look for a second. Um, Piff did... Uh, did Uh, fool us, and unfortunately he didn't fool. He did not fool Penn and Teller. He fooled Penn, but Teller figured it out for his trick. And then I was like, oh, because Piff is just such a funny guy. Look up Piff the Magic Dragon on YouTube. He's a British guy, a little British guy, who is so hilarious because he has such an attitude. But he dresses as a dragon. He's like a in a kid a kid's dragon costume, and he goes by Piff. And he always, always opens with, my name's Piff the Magic Dragon. You may know my brother, Steve. I always love it. But he's such a funny magician. And this season of America's Got Talent, he's on it. And not only that, he's he's in Vegas. He got one of the golden buzzers. He got a uh, Neil Patrick Harris, uh, his golden buzzer. So he's going to be in Vegas. He's gotten to the, basically the, you know, he'll, he'll be... And I hope he goes far, because he's he is kind of, like I he lives in Vegas now, but to me he's the a really good Vegas act. I could see him doing well in Vegas. And while I was at the LVO, I saw Terry Fader and Terry Fader once again. Same thing, like a great Vegas um, act. Right now I'm just doing a Shabdi Bone and painting the purity seals on uh, my on this paint blade. So, yeah. But uh, I hope he wins. He's my my favorite. And in BattleBots, 
Um, who's my favorite battle bot? Anybody who's watching out there, probably Bronco. Bronco's a flipper. And he's a... He, I think he has a chance to win this. Mm -hmm. Summer shows. I don't watch a lot of them, but I love summer shows. Because they're always energetic and, like, fun. They're always the fun summer competition shows. Um... Yeah. There's Big Brother. I watch a little bit of that. One of my good friends likes Big Brother, so I always talk. It's one of those shows I watch, so I, you know, I watch through her. And that's it. I think this thing's looking good. I am just got to airbrush some stuff tomorrow. I'll do the, the mud on the tracks and a light source and uh, some OSL. But he's basically done. I'm uh, I'm really happy with him. I love the, the camel. As I said, I used a Badger Patriot 105, my general airbrush, and it took, you know, 20 minutes to do. I love it. 20 minutes total of my, of my hand on the you know, airbrush, but uh, great models. There we go. Is it dry? Yeah, it's dryish. So, yeah, we're 57 minutes. Time's going by, by quick. I love these Penguin Jays. Hope you, got, hope you all do too. Because we got work done, you know? And it's just a, it's a little time in our week that we can set, sit down and dedicate ourselves to painting to relaxing and to bettering ourselves as painters. And I, I know it sounds cheesy when I say that, but I really do feel that. That every time I paint a model, not every time, like every model, but every painting experience makes me a better painter. It really does. It really just, it makes me a better painter. Um, I find myself, you know, especially ever since I started doing these, ever since I left Mini Wargaming, primarily, so the last year, was when I started doing painting tutorials again, a lot of painting, because I had more time. I feel that I've, I've grown as a painter. Uh, more than I ever have within, in any other time period. I've just, I've grown so much as a painter, you know? And yeah, and I hope you have too. You know, maybe not as much or maybe more, you know? I, I'm. I, that's that's the thing. Like we all, and that's the thing I love about that about the show, is that we all grow as artists together, and that's awesome. I know it's cheesy. I will admit that's a pretty cheesy thing, but it's true. It really is, you know. And I hope that you people out there have gotten as much done. Like I talked to some people in real life and they talked to me about, their, about painting with Jay and how much work they've gotten done since they started watching painting with Jay and painting along and that just, that's awesome. You know, that makes me happy because painted models are so much cooler to field. Nothing against unpainted models. Like I know people who have unpainted armies, cool, to each his own. But I love to have painted models on the table. They have so much more character and they bring so much more to the game. It's just having an army looking so thematically awesome marching across the table. So that's it. So I'll do some airbrush stuff tomorrow. He's all done. Let's end it. Mm -hmm. So that concludes, once again, another painting with Jay. I hope you got stuff done too. And uh, listen to my ramblings and stuff. I want politics this time. I'm, I'm wacky. And uh, as always, if you are interested in your own Mini Wargamer J t-shirt, go to my store at miniwargamerj.spreadshirt.com. It's in the description down below. And, uh, yeah, hope you really enjoyed this painting with Jay. Got some work done of your own. And, uh, Adam, you missed a spot. Again, I warned you, and you still didn't get that spot. Next time, it's all good. So thank you, as always, for supporting my videos, for watching this and painting along with me. And being my psychologists, or therapists, whatever they're called. It's all good. So thank you, as always. Until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting with me.